Have you ever bricked a AVR microcontroller? In this video, I'm going to show you how to unbrick a microcontroller. They are actually very few situations where it's very difficult to unbrick. Um, and the main one being if you mess with the fuse that disables the reset pin. And that fuse is located on the high fuse. See, the reset pin is required in order to program it. If you disable the reset pin, then you won't be able to program it. Now, the most common reason that you bricked your AVR is that you set the clock source incorrectly. So maybe it came from the factory expecting to have an external crystal and you didn't have one. You were thinking you would just use the internal oscillator. Well, the chip, when you first power it on, will not do anything because it doesn't have the external crystal that the fuse bits tell it it should have. And you can't change the fuse bits unless the AVR can tick. It needs a clock to be programmed. But that problem is actually fairly simple to solve. All you need is to provide a clock signal, a frequency, 0 to 5 volts, that does not even have to be equal to what the chip is expecting because SPI is an asynchronous communication protocol. It provides its own clock and the chip responds immediately to the SPI's requests for transmitting data. So as long as it has a clock, it will work, though you might have to dial down the speed of your programmer, which can be done very easily in AVR Dude. So, um, your options, if you have a function generator, that will work. Just set it to 0 to 5 volts, 1 megahertz, whatever it'll go up to, and apply the signal to the XTAL1 pin. There's an XTAL1 and an XTAL2. XTAL1 is an input. That is where the microcontroller will receive the clock signal. XTAL2 is actually an output and it's only used for driving your external crystal oscillator or resonator if you have one. Your other options would be to program another microcontroller to toggle a pin on and off or to use a 555 timer chip, really anything that can produce a reasonably consistent sequence of pulses can be used as the clock source for your microcontroller. Now, I am going to, for your sake, re-brick my microcontroller. Now, according to the data sheet, the default value for the low fuse will set up a external 8 megahertz oscillator, or that is, it, the chip will have an expectation of being provided its clock source from an external crystal or resonator of 8 megahertz. That's the factory default, and that value is uh, 1110 on the clock select, or the default for that whole byte is 0x5e. So I'm going to reflash the fuses on this chip with the factory defaults, which I will do here. There it goes, okay. And now I'm going to attempt to reprogram the chip again. And we see we now can't reprogram the chip anymore. I've bricked it because I don't have an external clock source like a crystal or a resonator on and it has the internal one turned off because of the fuse. 
So now we're going to have to get creative. I don't want to resolder this back on because I'm simulating a circumstance where you don't have that option. Okay, here's the frequency generator. First I'll put it into square wave mode and set the high and low level to 0 to 5 volts. That's very important so that you don't damage the chip. Oftentimes these function generators will start out in an AC mode where it goes from 2.5 volts above ground to 2.5 volts below ground. And if you're powering your chip like I am through a USB connector, which is tied back to the laptop's ground and earth ground, then negative two and a half volts here will actually be negative two and a half volts with respect to the microcontroller, which is not good. So set it to zero to five volts, the frequency Set it as high as it will go, maybe try 1 megahertz. Mine will go up to 5, but I'll just use 1. Next, locate the XTAL, XTAL 1 pin and hook the positive output probe. There. This, of course, would be tricky if you designed a board intending to use the internal oscillator and are now being forced to provide a clock source. Next, I'm going to hook up ground. I could use the ground on my programming socket, but I have to use that for programming too. So I'm just going to attach right here to where I took this capacitor off. Okay, so now let's turn on the clock. And attempt to reprogram this to use the internal oscillator. Uh, this chip is the Atmega 16U2 and according to it, the internal oscillator is set by 0010, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to jump to that. There it is, 0010, which would be in hex uh, 52 for that whole fuse. Now get ready. This is where you hope that everything goes well. Okay, make sure that your board has ample power supply and give it a go. That did not work. Let's see if my ground connector is a little bit shaky here. I must have had my programmer baud rate set too high because I had to raise my function generator clock frequency up to 4 megahertz um, in order to get it to program. But it did. So now that uh, I've set the fuse to use the internal oscillator, I can turn my clock source off. Um, now I'm going to just try to reprogram it uh, with this same program just to see if we can still communicate. And there it goes. We have successfully unbricked this microcontroller. From here, I could solder on an external crystal and change the fuses to use that. Um, but hopefully uh, this tutorial has uh, helped you unbrick your microcontroller. As a final word of caution, remember that I mentioned the reset disable fuse? Let me show that to you real quick. 
I can't stress enough that you need to be very careful when writing bits in the high fuse. That's uh, this one here. There's some neat options in here that you might be messing with, like whether or not to erase or preserve the EEPROM upon reprogramming. But there's a lot of damage you could do, or not damage, but um, unintentional things that will have severe side effects. Like if you, this bit number six, if you program bit number six, then the reset pin will no longer function as a reset pin. It'll just be a normal I.O. and you will not be able to program it using this guy at all. You'll need a high voltage programmer, which I don't have and a lot of you don't have either. And in that case, it's probably cheaper just to desolder your chip and put a new one on. So be very careful when tinkering with the fuse, the high bite. All right. So with that, um, happy tinkering, and thanks for watching.